Hey everyone, in this episode I'm going to show you how to debug your duplicate page view or bounce rate issues that you have in your store. Why do I combine these two debugging uh, processes? Normally if you have a duplicate page view issue then you are going to have a bounce rate issue um, and also trickle down effects on your average time on site, average time on page, etc. Uh, conversely, if you have a bounce rate issue where your bounce rate is defined, I define a bounce rate issue if it's really less than 20%, even 30%, that will signal that there's probably a bit of a tracking issue. Uh, if you do have that, then again, normally that means you either have a page view issue uh, or something else related to uh, likely GTM in, in your custom events. Uh, I'm gonna show you three things during this quick video. Uh, one, I'm gonna show you how to determine if you have duplicate page view or bounce rate tracking issues. Number two, I'm going to show you where do your duplicate page views most likely come from. And number three, how to fix these potential issues that you have today or may have in the future. Uh, before we get started, there are two tools that you're going to need during this process. One is a Google Analytics debugger. Uh, I use this all the time. This will log all GA hits that are sent uh, directly within your browser. So you can go through the front end of your site and validate what hits are being sent to Google Analytics without actually having to log in to GA to verify. The second is the Tag Assistant. So these are both Chrome extensions that I've linked to below. These are great tools that I use on a regular basis and they're very helpful to help uh, hone in on potential site issues. All right, so now we're gonna look at uh, how can you determine if you have bounce rate issues of your own. Very simple, under acquisition, all traffic channels, I'll usually peel back at least three to four, maybe even 12 months to, if it's a, a new account. And I'm looking at bounce rate here as the primary metric and see to see if we have any cliffs uh, where a bounce rate goes from around 50% to 3%. And this example, this is a, a classic case where something was deployed or changed and it did have a direct impact on bounce rate uh, because this is not normal. You'll never see your content uh, or anything just go from 50% to 3%. Uh, so that's usually one telltale sign. The other is in our page view report. So sometimes uh, it's not always a site-wide issue where you have duplicate page views firing on every single page, which leads you to the 2 to 3% aggregate bounce rate. If your bounce rate is closer to like 50 to 20%, 15 to 20% in aggregate, then it's still very likely or possible that you have issues specific to certain pages on your site. Um, in this example, I'm looking at the Google Merchandise Store, site content, all pages, and then I am sorting by bounce rate, uh, where actually I want to see the lowest bounce rates first. And you'll see we have uh, some bounce rates here for different pages that are 0%, where there's only one or two entrances. This is very normal. You'll see that because there isn't enough data. Uh, so what you'll want to do is actually include a filter where we have entrances greater than, and I'll just do 50 entrances here. And if we do find pages that have, again, a 0% bounce rate or less than 10%, uh, that usually means there, there's probably a potential tag firing or a duplicate page view event firing on these pages because this usually is not very normal. So how do you, to tell on your site? Uh, I'm going to show you a our demo store so this is a uh, Shopify store and I'm just going to reload the page. I already have my two Chrome extensions inst installed. So this is Google Tag Assistant. I'm just going to click to enable this and reload. And you'll see this will start to populate and you'll see the Google Analytics tag actually is already called out as yellow here. I'm going to click into this and you'll see, uh, surprisingly, I have three page view requests on this page. So this is not normal. Uh, you can click in to view the different pages, uh, but really all you need to see here is under GA, there's three page view requests, um, and that's definitely not normal. Now, if I wanted to use the Chrome debugger, then I'll inspect, uh, to open up my Chrome tools. I'll go to console and just to clear this out and reload. What this is doing is populating every hit that's sent to GA. Uh, and you'll see a bunch of Google Analytics tags that are uh, populating here. I'll scroll all the way to the top. So the way that you can use this is either just scroll through each one and I'm looking for page view hits. In this example, we see the hit type page view and you'll see I have uh, one that's here. If I continue scrolling, here's another page view. 
and then finally the third. So in this example, this is a pretty bad setup. I have three page views firing. Obviously, uh, that's not accurate and not normal for users. Now, where could these different page views come from? The page view event hits come from. Popping over to Shopify, uh, I'm under preferences, and you'll see I have my Google Analytics account set up here. So this is my property ID, which is 787-2. It's set up in Shopify, so there's one. Now, the second place I'll look is, and I see this fairly regularly with Shopify stores that are trying to implement GTAG. Uh, I'll actually see the Google Analytics GTAG also implemented through the theme. So I'll go to my theme, um, my theme.liquid, which is where all of my uh, site-wide scripts are going to live. And you'll see here that I'm, I'm highlighting a second Google Analytics script. So this is exactly what you would get if you were to go to GA and then copy this and then paste it into your theme. So this is where the second Google Analytics script is coming from. So I'm just going to delete this and then save and go back to the front end and let's reload one time and we should see I now only have two. All right, so we go up to our tag assistant, you'll see Google Analytics, click into this and now I, I have two page view requests. So this again, not normal, we wanna figure this out. The next place to look, and this is usually where the any of the other problems might live is in Google Tag Manager itself. If you do have Google Tag Manager installed or somebody has installed it for you, then you'll want to look under tags and then look for a Google Analytics page view tag. So the best way, the quickest way to look for that is under the type. Uh, if you want to just even sort here uh, or filter, you can look for Google Analytics Universal Analytics event tags and then look for a trigger that is firing in all pages. And in this example, we have the UA page view. So I click into this here and I have my page view tag and you'll see this is set to a Google Analytics variable. And this variable is the same tracking ID that we just looked at uh, and deleted from our theme. So now what we wanna do is I'm actually going to pause this and we'll save. So if you are not trying to implement Google Analytics um, just through GTM, especially if you're an e-commerce store on Shopify, uh, just this tag here alone is not going to send any of the e-commerce data that you'll need. So uh, by default, if you're not quite sure what's going on, then I would revert back to keeping your native Google Analytics tracking setup here that we looked at within the preferences setting, and then try to figure out where, where why this tag was set up in the first place, who set it up, what they're trying to do. Uh, so now we pause this tag. I'm going to submit this. Okay, so now that we've... Uh, published our GTM account, let's go back to the front end and let's validate that we only have one page view trigger that is firing. So we are on the homepage here. I'm gonna reload and then we'll look at the GA tag assistant and you'll see now the Google Analytics tag is, is blue, green, and it's only one page view request. So this is exactly what we're looking for here. Now let's say you've gone two to three days with these updates and you fixed your duplicate page view tracking issue, but you're still seeing a bounce rate of two to 3%. Then usually what that problem uh, is coming from is due to a tag uh, from GTM. So this would be a custom event tag that's firing from GTM. A very common example is a scroll depth tag or a all triggers tag or all links trigger tag. Basically what those tags are doing is they're firing very frequently. So if we were to go over to the front end of the site again, and if we reload, you'll see immediately my uh, scroll depth tag is firing right away, and that's pushing an event to GA. Now this isn't a problem per se uh, that it's firing, but the problem comes is if this tag does not have this non-interaction -inter hit set to true. Basically what this little setting hit here is, it's very confusing for many people, um, is if it's set to true, then you're still sending the hit to Google, but Google is basically ignoring it when it comes to calculating session-based metrics such as bounce rate or average time on page, average time on site, etc. cetera. Uh, so when in doubt, I always leave this as set to true uh, because uh, that is going to allow bounce rates to really be a true depiction of page view level bounce rates. So did somebody land in the homepage 
and then interact a little bit on the home page, but then leave. Uh, if I did not, if I never loaded another page view, then that would be considered a bounce for, for my session. So if you have that uh, issue, again, after you fix your page view issues, the next place is to go into GTM and start looking at different tags and if they have this set to true or false. If false, then it's likely an issue for you that you'll want to, uh, you want to change that to true, deploy it, and, uh, and monitor your bounce rate and see if it improves from there.